Ladies and gentlemen, feel better, do better, and live better. This is something we all want. Every one of us wants those three things in our life. Yet so many of us never achieve the very thing we want. Why? We've all heard or we've said, geez, I never get seem to catch a break. Or, God, the cards are always stacked against me. Now, with this negative energy that we're putting out there, a self-fulfilling prophecy, is there a way to help us feel better, do better, and live better? We're going to find out today. My name is Frank Sicari, and my associates and I are putting together a series of wellness centers, which will combine energy and traditional medicine. I'm going to share more of this in the upcoming months. Now, I'm real excited today, ladies and gentlemen. My guest today is, is Brad Yates. And Brad is one of the foremost authorities on the impact that tapping can make in our lives. He has worked with people from every walk of life, from professional athletes and movie stars, to residents at a program for homeless men and women. Brad is featured on is a featured expert on every Tapping World Summit. Now, I attended one of his workshops on January 1st, just a few days ago, and I can tell you he is simply the best. Brad, welcome to Energy Heal. <laughs> Thank you for that very kind uh, introduction, Frank. It's uh, what you do is so impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, there were a thousand people on this call with him, and he had them all mesmerized. So, Brad, tell us, what, what for the people who don't know, what is tapping and how does this work? Yeah, certainly. Tapping, uh, also known as EFT, which is short for Emotional Freedom Techniques, is a mind-body tool primarily for reducing stress. But it covers so many things because when you consider the fact that most, if not all of the issues that trouble us are either caused by or worsened by stress, then we can see that having a simple tool for reducing stress can be so beneficial in so many areas of our lives. And it was originally based on acupuncture for thousands of years in Chinese medicine. They've said there's a flow of energy through the body along these pathways that are called meridians. And in, when that energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well-being. And when that energy gets blocked, we don't feel so good. We don't think as clearly. We don't make the best choices. And that has all kinds of unfortunate consequences. So in traditional acupuncture, the doctor would stick needles in these key points. And we're just tapping with our fingers to stimulate these points. And we have a growing body of scientific research uh, validating how powerful this tool is for lowering stress and all kinds of other benefits. How did you discover this? When did you so I, uh, <laughs> how does a grown man find himself tapping on his face for a living? <laughs> it's a heck of a deal. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I was just going about minding my own business when I, uh, as, as an actor, I was traveling the world doing theater went to Los Angeles to become a movie star as one does. And while I was there, I met this wonderful woman who, you know, Christy and uh, fell in love, got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought I might need a backup job. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I did play one on TV, but you know, I didn't make enough playing a doctor on days of our lives to, uh, to support a family. So I started exploring other opportunities and, had always been fascinated with the power of the mind. So I trained to become a hypnotherapist. And then after a couple of years, I realized that was my calling doing personal development work. And we left Los Angeles, moved to Northern California. And through some other hypnotherapists, I heard about this energy work and this tapping. And this guy, Gary Craig, who is doing this workshop in Las Vegas. And I thought, okay, I'll go. And, you know, fortunately for me, I, a lot of times when people first see this process of tapping on your face, it's like, yeah, that looks really weird. Now I'd been an actor. I had gone to Ringling brothers and Barnum Bailey clown college. <laughs> this was not the weirdest thing I'd ever been asked to do. So I, it was a little bit easier for me to, <laughs> to take it on. And I just, you know, thought, wow, this is a powerful technique, especially when he had us tapping on chocolate cravings mm. and my chocolate craving, which was like at an eight or nine out of 10, when he gave, piece, uh, gave us all pieces of candy, I, I could not eat that piece of chocolate. And I did not eat chocolate for two years after that. Mm -hmm. now, I got better, um, but uh, I recovered from that. 
but I can still, uh, you know, use tapping to clear cravings. And so that was like a profound experience of that moment for me to say, wow, there's something to this. So I started little by little introducing it into my hypnotherapy sessions, which little by little became tapping sessions. Mm -hmm. And here we are. <laughs> it's incredible. One of the things I've heard you say, and I've read that you, you put in there is uh, people have a tendency to self-sabotage. They know what they want, but they, they put enough obstacles in their way to not get there. Yeah. You see that. Self, Self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. Hmm. We brilliantly stop ourselves from getting things that we might consciously say we want because unconsciously we think it's not safe for us. And we don't even wear it. We, we sit there and we you know, miss phone calls or we forget to go to the gym or we eat something that we know we shouldn't have eaten. And then we beat ourselves up, not even realizing it was brilliant. Some part of me was saying, hey, based on old programming, this isn't safe to move forward. It's not safe to get that job. It's not safe to be in better health. It's not safe to make more money. And, you know, consciously we say it is, but, you know, the conscious mind is what, five to 10% of our mind. The other 90, 95% is going, no, this would be bad. You need to not make that phone call. And so we don't even realize that, that we've been trying to protect ourselves. We beat ourselves up, but the beating ourselves up is brilliant too, because the more time I spend beating myself up, the less time I have to go and say, oh, well, I'll go make that phone call now. No, 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 I, I will, but uh, I have to spend some time beating myself up. Oh, shoot, I ran out of time. They've left the office. I can't make the call today. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. So we should have compassion for ourselves rather than beating ourselves up and, mm -hmm. uh, and then allow ourselves to change our mind. <laughs> no one likes change. It doesn't matter what it is. They, they don't like to change. Yet we know consciously that until nothing, nothing changes until we do. Yeah. Okay. So how does tapping help with that mindset? Yeah. My, my good friend, Andy Bryce uh, says, everybody wants things to be different. They just don't want anything to change. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And because change feels threatening to us. So from the, uh, when our, when the modern brain was evolving, you know, a couple hundred thousand years ago, this part of the brain called the amygdala would uh, perceive threat and put us into fight or flight. Mm -hmm. It's like, is this safe for me? Is this not safe for me? Do I need to run? Do I need to fight? Do I need to freeze? And we still respond in that way to things that feel threatening. You know, we may not be facing life-threatening situations like a saber-toothed tiger or uh, a tribe with a, a, an enemy tribe or things like that, but we still respond to things that are threatening like someone says something negative to us or with something we perceive as negative. And we start to go into this stress response. The same thing happens when we look at change. Even if it's a positive change, we can objectively say, you know, having more money would be a great thing. But if it's not what I'm familiar with, it feels, if it feels unfamiliar, it feels threatening. And mm -hmm. so a stress response happens and I shut myself down in ways that I may not even be aware of. And then I'm wondering, left wondering, why can't I make any more money? So we've, we've got this chess grandmaster in our mind thinking 50 moves ahead. Mm -hmm. And and every move that we look at, it's like, ah, I keep getting checkmated. <laughs> so we look at, uh, you know, like a job opportunity comes up or whatever else it might be. If, if we're single, we may be in the grocery store and we see an attractive stranger and we think, in the mind, the chess grandmaster starts going overboard, going saying, you know, we could go up and say hi to that person. They might say, hey, hi back. We might strike up a conversation. We might find we have some things in common. We might go out on a date. That might lead to a second date, a third date. We might move in together. We might get married and they'll <laughs> break my heart just like the last person. Oh, look, there's a sale on aisle two. And we are down on aisle two before we're consciously aware of any of this. And we're looking at the items in aisle two going, I wish I could meet somebody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that exactly. change from being single, even though we consciously say we, we would like to meet someone, we've gotten, we feel safe for being single and meeting somebody feels like change. Mm -hmm. And so we avoid it because it feels threatening. You say, I think it was on January 1st, the Michelangelo effect. Expand on that. What, what do you mean with that? 
So you can see I've got my David back there and I have I David's all over the place. I, so Michelangelo said that the statue is already there perfect inside the marble. All I have to do is chip away what doesn't belong to reveal the masterpiece inside. And to me, that's a metaphor for what we're doing with tapping. We're the best version of ourselves is already there inside the most successful, the most healthy, the most loving version of ourselves, but it's covered up by all this excess marble, all this fear, all this doubt. And so the tapping clears that away. And that's how the, that's how the tapping deals with the fear of change. Cause we look at that experience that feels threatening. Oh, you know, if I meet that person, that change is going to be threatening but that's based on misunderstandings. And so that, that fear response that's happening in the body is what we're able to reduce with the tapping. It's calming the system down, allowing the mind to, to relax and slow down and say, well, let me look at that really. <laughs> and so we're able to look at the change and see whether or not our fear is, uh, is really founded or not. One of the things when, when I first heard of tapping and my, my first sense of it was, yeah, I'm having a crappy day and stressed out. And this is going to help me get unstressed from this crappy moment that I'm in. And then I've watched some of your stuff. You have a thousand videos, a thousand videos. And you, you use tapping for joy, for pain, for abundance, for wealth, for love, for addiction. Does it help in all those areas? How does it help in all those areas? Because in all of those areas... There are actions we can take to make it better, but we stop ourselves from taking that action because of the stress response, because of the fear of change. So, you know, again, if you looked at tapping as only stress relief, that's where it can work in all of these areas because what stops me from being more abundant? Well, what do I need to do to do that? I may need to study more to get a better job. Why am I not doing that? resistance, fear, fear of change. It may be negative beliefs about myself. I'm not worthy of that. And so it feels, uh, you know, going back to the idea of self-sabotage is misguided self-love. I am avoiding all of those positive things because they feel threatening to me. And as I tap, I calm down that response and I can allow myself to see, oh, no, it's, it's okay for me to have more money. It's okay for me to do what it takes to be healthier. It, it's okay for me to do what it takes to have happier relationships in my life. I, I have what it takes and I can handle that. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a, of a, of a mindset and change improvement than it is when you see the physical tapping thing. Yeah. That's it goes amazing. back to that idea of the Michelangelo principle that, that, you know, all of that joy, abundance and all that, the person who can enjoy that is already inside. We're just clearing away that stuff. That doesn't belong. Away. <laughs> I've talked to some people, Brad, and they say, you know, I've tried EFT and I've watched Brad, um, but I don't know what to say. What, what do you say to those people? Because because you go through a whole process with them. Right. And that is something that, that confuses some people. The very basic version of EFT, we just look at whatever the issue is. So if I, it's, I'm feeling stress. Even though I feel this stress, I choose to love and accept myself. Stress, stress, stress. So it's only one word you have to think about. I like to do an exploratory process of looking at, you know, what might be the things that are underneath that stress. And it's a very intuitive process for me. And it's one that's built up over time. So that's why I started creating the videos was to say, look, if, if the fear of not knowing what to say is what's stopping you, let me make it simple for you. I'll tell you what to say to start with. And then I always encourage folks. And if something else comes to mind, go with that. Don't, don't assume, oh, well, Brad knows the exact words for everything. No, mm -hmm. I can give you something to start with. And it may be exactly what you need to hear. And it may just allow you to get an idea of what's going on there. But the basic thing is you, you can't get it wrong. <laughs> And you can even, the tap-in can be beneficial even if you don't say anything. So you can just start off, if, if you're feeling stress, just start off by tapping and don't even worry about what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. Now you have over a thousand videos on YouTube. Yep. So you were one of the first, and you're still one of the most successful in bringing tapping to YouTube. What did you see that everyone else missed? 
<laughs> Funny enough, one of the things that, <laughs> that, that people really like about my videos is simply that I take enough time between phrases to let people repeat the, the phrase back. Um, you know, just a very simple little technique of just say the phrase and then say it again in your mind and pause because when people are tapping along and if they don't have time to get the phrase out, then that creates more anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate enough that I came to this from an acting background. So I was already comfortable on camera. I was already comfortable being, you know, enthusiastic and being funny. And so bringing a lightness to the work. That's the, uh, the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down because mm -hmm. <laughs> some of the stuff we're talking about is really heavy stuff. And, you know, it's kind of hard to say, oh, I'm going to go on YouTube and be miserable right now. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can, you know, bring some humor, at least a little bit of levity to it, then it makes it easier to go through. And, and then the other thing is I just kept putting out content, mm -hmm. you know, I had over a thousand videos. I just, it was just, thinking, okay. And, and it's never, it, it's been a great marketing tool in terms of people find out about me and it's allowed me to go and speak to audiences around the world, which is just mm -hmm. amazing, but it was never done as a marketing thing. And it still isn't the, the videos that I make for that. I release every Monday, there's never thought of, okay, what, how much money let's make or how much would this, it's always just, I get ideas you know, from different places, sometimes I'll be listening to an audio book and go, oh, hey, that would make a great tapping video or something will come up in my life or hear something from someone else. You just think, oh, that's tapping could really help with that. And it may just be a word. It may be a, you know, a couple of phrases. And it's just this, you know, this calling. It's like, you have to put that out there for people that would help people. And uh, so just coming from that place of, I uh, I have a mission. I have a, a job to do to be of service to God, as I understand God and the world at large. And then just putting the content out there and, you know, you keep doing something long enough and people are going to start to notice. Exactly. Exactly. And it comes from the heart. And that, that's very clear. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever interact with Brad, you don't get this sense of he's in it for anything other than bringing value and bringing calm and bringing peace. It, he's, it's just really tremendous. You have, if you haven't seen these videos, you need to see them. All right, Brad, let's ask, let's get to the elephant in the room here. Now, tapping has been around forever. It's before Christ. We've had energy healing models. Why is it now more accepted and in, in, in widely accepted in schools and with emotional support groups and correction systems and corporate world, et cetera? What do you think stopping this or preventing it, not stopping it, preventing it? Well, <laughs> One, one thing is resistance to change. So someone comes along and says, I've got something that'll help you make change. And while the uh, conscious mind of most people say, oh, that would be great. The unconscious mind is like, well, that's threatening. We need to dismiss that. And this thing about EFT is it looks a little strange to most folks. So it makes it very easy for a lot of people to dismiss. Oh, that's just ridiculous. That's woo woo. Someone came up to me at a conference and said, so would you say that what you do is in the realm of the woo-woo? And I said, no, <laughs> you might. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's just a matter of using the body system. There's nothing more woo, any more woo about this than, say, using the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just using the way the body is designed. But because it looks strange, people are like, I, I don't want to do that. And... And so it's that, and, and really the, the, the fear of change. I think that some of the negative comments that I've gotten on YouTube are from people who see that and say, oh, you're going to show me something simple that's going to make change in my life. I, I need to dismiss this. I need to ridicule this. Otherwise, and if they weren't feeling threatened by it, why would they even bother to leave a comment? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I had somebody who left, who left comments like that on like three or four videos saying what a waste of time this is. It's like, then why didn't you stop after one? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's, I, and, it's, I, and it's because they have, and, and, and I, it's not that these people are stupid or, or whatever. It's that there is this fear of change. And when something you come along and say, here's a simple thing that can really help and make change. The unconscious mind says, Whoa, we want no part of that. Mm-hmm. I have heard uh, comments like, 
not to pick on any sector, and, and it is, it, but we have these counselors and people who have been trained in the, in, in the processes. And I interviewed Shane Fagan a few weeks back, and he said he went 18 years, 18 years through traditional counseling, therapy, et cetera. And at the end of 18 years, they said, okay, now let's try this new thing. But it wasn't tapping. It was another set of traditional therapy. And he finally said enough. And then he found an energy healer and he said in a very short window of time, because it was clearing the mind and it wasn't taking a pill and then take another pill. It's clearing the mind. It's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Well, Brad, we're just about out of time. And with all you've been through, what last thoughts do you want to leave the viewers around the world who are struggling to find this peace and hope and joy? Yeah. My main thing is uh, learn to love yourself. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, Lucille Ball said, the main thing is you got to learn to love yourself. It's hard to get anything done until you, you love yourself. And clearing away the reasons why you couldn't or shouldn't. You know, whatever reason you have about, well, I can't love myself because dot, dot, dot. It's a misunderstanding. And part of you is holding on to it because it feels like it's keeping you safe. Tap that crap out. <laughs> Let that go because the more you allow yourself to love yourself, the better you're going to take care of yourself, the better the life you're going to create for yourself. Because when you really love someone, you want them to have the best life possible. And uh, you also find it easier to love other people. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> it is. One of the things I've heard you say is, uh, and I hope I say it right here. If we always do what we've always done, we'll only get what we've always gotten. Right. Yeah. Something has to change. What's the best way for people to reach you, Brad? Uh, thanks. The best way is at my website, tapwithbrad.com. And you can also find me all over social media on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram at tapwithbrad. Wonderful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we're just about out of time. I want to thank Brad Yates. This has been amazing. And if again, if you have not seen the videos, go see them. If you've never been to any of his workshops, go get to one. He has a quest. We all want to feel better. We all want to do better. We all want to live better. So take that first step. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I say every week, no matter what life throws at you, and as we heard today, it's going to throw a lot at you. Do three things. Look up, get up, and never, ever give up. Pick up the pieces and start moving forward in better times and better people like Brad Yates, like his wife, Christy Yates, will come into your life. If you want to see this show on Roku TV or on my YouTube channel, uh, my YouTube channel is Frank Zakari. And if you see uh, it on YouTube, please subscribe. Let me leave you with this as I do every week, ladies and gentlemen. None of us are in this alone. And the secret to walking on water is to know where the rocks are. And today, Brad showed us where many of those rocks are. Join me again next week. We look into another life-altering event. Brad, again, thank you so much. Thank you, Frank.